And for more, we are joined by former Canadian international and Canadian soccer Hall of Famer Amy Walsh. And Amy, we have to start off with Janine Becky. Just how big of a loss is this for Canada ahead of the World Cup? Yeah, well, first of all, I just want to say for Janine and, and to Janine that I think the, the whole nation, Canadian soccer fans, even people on the outside looking in are, are gutted for her. Um, four months ahead of those Women's World Cup in New Zealand and Australia. And I think the, the leadership that she's shown in the labor strike with Canada soccer has really been um, in, incredible. Um, so, I mean, that just speaks to what she does on the field. And so she's going to be a huge loss for this squad who are going to have limited preparation anyway, but her versatility, her athleticism, her acumen, both defensively and offensively. Um, and then for Bev Priestman as a coach to have the ability, um, you know, to, to have a player like Janine at her disposal. So not only is Janine the first player, or I should say was the first player on that team sheet, it lent Bev Priestman a certain amount of flexibility from a coaching standpoint to move from a 4-3-3 to the, uh, more often utilized in, in recent times, that 4-2-3-1, where Janine could be deployed anywhere from a fullback to uh, a wingback to a winger or even uh, in the middle of the park. Um, and, and certainly her, her engine was something that allowed her to be on the field for, for 90 minutes and also contributed to the depth of the attack. So that was something emerging as Christine Sinclair is in the twilight of her career, Janine Becky was somebody who stepped up and was filling the gap in terms of putting the ball in the back of the net. So not only did she have the ability to to kind of drive the attack and be, be the heartbeat of this Canadian squad, but she was not only the provider on the pinpoint crosses, but she could score goals in the back of the net, like the one we saw in the Arnold Clark Cup with her left foot, a real screamer. Um, so to have that in her toolbox and now to take that out of the equation for this Canadian team, there are going to be lots of questions asked, not only on the depth of the attack, but um, about the quality of this squad um, coming into the Women's World Cup. And, and Amy, you kind of just touched on it there. Creating offense is a concern surrounding this team. Now, beyond Becky, there are some, some questions around the status of Nichelle Prince and Deanne Rose. So how big of a challenge is this going to be for Bev Priestman's side? Well, yeah, again, to that depth, that looks so promising. Uh, you, you're only taking one player out, but it's adding to, as you mentioned, Deanne Rose, whom we saw in, in social media posts from Reading, back on the field, back training, but could be a long while till she's match fit. And Nichelle Prince, who might not be ready in time, who suffers a, a ruptured Achilles tendon this past fall. But, you know, there are players emerging, like a prolific scorer, Chloe Lacasse, playing in Portugal for Benfica, Clarissa Laracy, who for a long time was that prolific scorer with Celtic, who now is being tested um, on a regular basis in, in Sweden. Um, and then you do have Adriana Leon. But again, an issue there is not getting the, the, the regular time and these valuable minutes with Manchester United. So Christine Sinclair will again, I think, be heavily relied upon to produce those goals, but now sitting at 190 goals for country. Um, you know, will she get to 200? How much longer will she play? And I think you really do need that supporting staff and that scoring by committee uh, with this team. And, and the big question is, where is that going to come from? Amy, excellent stuff as always. April 11th is the next time we'll see our Canadian national women's team in action as they take on France. Thanks, Amy.